Welcome back to Breakfast Television, where we are now discussing relationships and fighting within relationships, learning more specifically how to fight fair. I'm joined by Lori Yassishin. She is a therapist who's talking about this with us today. And Lori, let's first of all start out. Is fighting a sign that a relationship is in trouble? No, not necessarily. Fighting really is just another word for conflict. And conflict is a normal process when people disagree. And disagreement is normal and healthy in couples as you get to know each other and work things out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you often hear uh, the phrase, and it was you know probably passed down by mothers to mother to mother. Yeah, yeah. Never go to bed angry. Right. You say that that's not necessarily always the case. Well, I, you know it doesn't feel good to go to bed angry, and I would say try to avoid it. But really, if it's a choice between fighting till three o'clock in the morning when you're exhausted and you don't have the tools anymore to fight fairly or to have a good resolution, then get some sleep. And um, then in the morning, things might look different, feel different, you get a little bit of distance, and you might have a better chance at getting a resolution to your fight. Okay, and you do, you talk about those tools to fighting fairly, and you've come up with some uh, great rules, if you will. Timing is key, isn't it? Yeah, you know, when you choose to fight is pretty important as, you know, how you're fighting. So choose a time to fight when you're not tired, when you're not rushed or hungry, when you aren't going to be interrupted, and try not to fight in front of your children. So choosing a nice quiet time when you're both in a good frame of uh, good frame of mind. Okay, and of course, mm -hmm. I mean that can be difficult when you're dealing with you know the heat of a moment. But that's again another skill that you have to learn to kind of suppress stuff, let it wait, not necessarily suppress, but just put it on hold for a little bit, right? Right, or just calming yourself down, taking a little bit of time to to soothe that anger that's bubbling up mm -hmm. and. Um, and then you can be more effective. Otherwise, your emotions are in charge, and often when our emotions are in charge, we do things we're not very proud of. Okay, so mm -hmm. try to be calm, and that's, I guess, what that is all about, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you say listen, and uh, I can only imagine that, well, I mean, this is a difficult thing to do it, well, it right? sounds, when, you're, when you're angry. It sounds obvious, right? Listen, um, I once read somewhere that God gave us two ears and one mouth, and that's because listening is twice as hard as talking. And I thought that was perfect because it's true. It's a skill to learn to listen, not just with our ears, but with our hearts. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I try to tell people, um, rather than listening for your opportunity to defend, try to listen to what you agree with, what your partner is saying, because you might find that you're actually saying the same thing. Makes a good point. Uh, now, sometimes people, you know, let things really go too long before saying anything, and by the time they uh, they blow, it's you know through the roof blow. All of the mm -hmm. issues are on the table at once. But you say. Keep it one thing at a time. Focus on one problem. Try to keep one thing at a time, right? Otherwise, you have this laundry list of things that ne no, none of them end up getting resolved. So sticking onto one topic of, at a time helps you be able to focus on it and find a resolution to it. Okay, very important, Stefan. Just to review quickly, some uh, great things to keep in mind for fighting fair, timing. You want to make sure that uh, you've got no distractions coming up, that you can really deal with the issue and get to the bottom of it. Of course, try to be calm. It can be uh, difficult to do at times but uh, take some deep breaths and, and know what it is that you uh, need to get to the bottom of listen as you mentioned one of the hardest things but we have two ears for a reason so uh, try to stay in tune in that regard and of course dealing with one issue at a time very important you don't want to try and get ahead of yourself and try to solve all the world's problems at once one step at a time right. and you'll get there uh, you're gonna stick around Lori and we thank you to do that we're gonna be talking more on relationships in a little bit Thanks so much for staying with us here at Breakfast Television. We are discussing relationships today and more specifically fighting within relationships. Laura Yassishin is a therapist that is here to talk about this with us. Um, now earlier on we had some uh, some great points that you passed along. So just to review quickly, uh, you mentioned that uh, in Fighting Fair timing is everything. Trying to find a time that you can actually deal with the issues at hand. Try to be calm, very important. Make sure that you listen to one another and deal with one issue at a time. Now to continue this conversation you have some more great pointers for us, Lori. So uh, let's talk about hitting below the belt. Right. We all know what hitting below the belt means. It means taking a shot at someone's vulnerable spot just to just to be mean and hurtful. And while it f might give you some satisfaction in the moment that you've gotten a score, it really in the long term damages the relationship and it damages the other person's self-esteem. So try to remember that just because you're angry or hurt, it doesn't give you the right to be cruel or mean. 
Okay, good point. And of course, uh, trying to be calm will help you avoid some of those things that you're just going to blurt out anyway. Right. Use I statements. What's that about? Well, most of the time when we're fighting, we talk about the other person, what they're doing that makes us upset. So we use you statements, and you statements is blaming and puts the other person on, on the defensive. I statements is talking about yourself in the experience. So, for example, instead of saying, um, you're home late again, um, you might want to say, when, when I don't know where you are, I get worried. Okay. That's talking about my experience of what's going on. Right. And, and it's less uh, defensive provoking. Right, so they aren't going into it with their backup already, right? Right. Uh, turn complaints into requests. What do you mean by that? Well, it's easy to complain about what we don't like, but it doesn't actually let the other person know what we want. And so it's helpful to try to think about, okay, what am I complaining about? But really, what do I want out of it? So um, be specific. Use your I statements. You know, you might say, I'd really like it if you gave me a call if you're going to be late. Okay. You know, instead of complaining that they're late. Sure. And sometimes mm -hmm. you just need to spell it out. Like you said, be specific. Uh, no cryptic statements there, right? Right. Let the person know what it is that you want. Right. Uh, offer solutions, right? Instead of just complaining. Right. You know, come to the table. You're a team. Um, the problem that you have is a problem that you have together. Whether you think it's the other person's fault or whether you think it's really the, in the other person's court, you're a team. You're in a relationship. So come to the table with some solutions, including solutions, um, ideas that you can do to make the problem a little bit better or to um, make the situation better, not just what your partner can do to make it better. Okay. Knowing, of course, that it is a two-way street in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, so if if fighting in a relationship is normal, how do you know then if the relationship is in trouble? Well, I have two questions that people can ask themselves. The first one is of the of the guidelines that we've just talked about, how many and how often are you breaking them or having a, a hard time with them? So that's one. So if it's a lot, then maybe you need a little bit of help. Um, the other one is really what is your intent and what's the spirit of, of the conflict and the fighting? Is the spirit of resolution and trying to come to a solution and having a better relationship? Or is sometimes the spirit or often is often the spirit of the fight about vengeance and control and cruelty. Okay. So in which case there might be a problem there. You might need a little bit of help with a couples therapist who can help you sort that out to get to some of the underlying things that have made things difficult. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, just to review quickly these tips that you passed along for us, Lori. Uh, no hitting below the belt. Pretty self-explanatory there. Use I statements. It kind of deflects uh, a little bit of the blame, if you will. Turn complaints into requests and, of course, be able to offer some solutions knowing that the two of you are working together uh, to resolve the issue. Big thanks once again, Lori, for having you come down and discuss this with us. We really appreciate it. Thanks.